Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing other dark side of Coca-Cola. Critics claim that this is yet another example of Coke benefiting from shady deals with politicians. Of course, Coca-Cola has always had to acquire vast quantities of natural resources in order to succeed. In fact, it's the largest sugar buyer in the world. However, as the 90s arrived, Coke began to face yet more negative publicity. For example, in Mexico City, one shopkeeper said she was told her deliveries of Coke would stop unless she removed an alternative cola from her store. Meanwhile, in Brazil, Coke rolled out a new type of vending machine that would increase the price of Coke depending on how hot it was outside. Also, to further boost sales figures and trick investors, Coke engaged in channel stuffing forcing distributors to buy more syrup than they needed at the end of quarters to make Coke's profits look better than they really were. But what we do know is that since 1989, countless unionized workers employed at the Coca-Cola bottling plants in Colombia have been killed, and many more have received death threats. In fact, in 2001, the International Labor Rights Fund filed a lawsuit against Coca-Cola bottlers, claiming they'd openly engaged death squads to intimidate, torture, kidnap, and even murder union officials in Latin America. A few years later, another lawsuit was brought about by Guatemalan workers alleging that they and their families at the Coca-Cola bottling plant had been victims of violence after the workers decided to join unions. They'd wanted to join a union because some workers were earning just $15 per day for 15-hour shifts. However, again, there were allegations of kidnapped, torture, and murder of union leaders and their family members. What we do know for sure is that the deeper you look into Coke's past, the more you chip away at their wholesome image they try to present. For example, Asa Candler, the entrepreneur who incorporated the Coca-Cola company and played a pivotal role in popularizing the drink, once said, the most beautiful sight that we see is the childhood labor. The younger the boy began work, the more beautiful. However, before we all get the pitchforks out, I think it's important to acknowledge that if you look at any giant company with such a long history, you're probably going to find some ethical disasters in their past. That's not an excuse, but a reminder that business is brutal. Many of the same criticisms of Coke also apply to many of their competitors. And of course, Coke has done plenty of good for the world too. We can't come to conclusions from just one side of the story. It's never black and white. What's ironic, though, is that some of the worst press Coca-Cola has ever received was nothing to do with any of these moral or legal issues. No, folks, the biggest backlash of all came from changing the taste. Did you know that the Coca-Cola company was actually offered the chance to buy Pepsi's business multiple times, including for only $50,000 in 1933? However, Coca-Cola turned them down, and instead, they tried to sue Pepsi for using the word cola in their ads, claiming that they were trying to rip off Coca-Cola's products. But this backfired when Pepsi countersued, claiming that Coke was using anti-competitive tactics to build a monopoly. The courts agreed and ruled that cola was a generic term that anyone could use. However, since Coke missed their chance to buy Pepsi, they ended up getting locked in an ongoing marketing battle with them. At one point, Coke and Pepsi both started cutting their prices and offering discounts to try and compete with each other. But they soon realized that this was hurting both of them. Whether they made a secret deal behind closed doors or not is unknown, but soon they both reverted back to their normal pricing and tried to compete on advertising instead. Eventually, Pepsi had the simple but genius idea to actually compete on taste. In 1975, Pepsi launched the Pepsi Challenge, where they gave people two white cups, one containing Pepsi and one containing Coca-Cola. People didn't know which was which and were encouraged to taste both to see which they preferred. The test results showed that Pepsi was preferred by slightly more people. So, Pepsi started using this stat in all of their advertising, and all across America, more people denied this was true. But when they conducted their own tests, they found that Pepsi did indeed score slightly higher in a blind taste test. Meanwhile, Coca-Cola was slowly but steadily losing market share. They tried everything, from huge marketing campaigns to price promotions. But every year, Coke's market share slightly declined and Pepsi slightly increased. It started to seem that perhaps the Pepsi challenge was right. The problem was that more people simply preferred the taste of Pepsi. And thus, Coca-Cola began an incredibly secret mission. They were going to change Coke's formula. After rigorous testing and trials, they discovered a new cola formula that consistently performed better than both original Coke and Pepsi. Over and over, they repeated the blind taste test, and the data was clear, the new formula was more popular. And so, just short of Coca-Cola's 100-year anniversary, they did the unthinkable. They changed the Coca-Cola formula and replaced it with new Coke. 
Coca-Cola is about to announce what it calls the most significant development in its history. Pepsi-Cola says Coke is merely trying to match Pepsi's success. These two products, Pepsi and Coke, have been going at it, eyeball to eyeball, and in my view, the other guy just blinked. And immediately, the chaos began. Every single day, thousands of phone calls and letters arrived at Coke's offices. They were a mixture of distraught people begging for the old version of Coke back, and people who were downright furious that Coke had the nerve to take away the original formula. Coke expected the uproar would soon die down, especially once people actually tried the new formula. But the outrage simply intensified. The media was equally full of outrage reports, and the Coke phone lines were constantly jammed with complaints for months. When new Coke advertisements were shown on giant screens in stadiums, people loudly booed. It became popular to hate new Coke. Of course, many of the people complaining hadn't even tried the new formula. As one Coke employee put it, we could have introduced the elixir of the gods, and it wouldn't have made any difference. It quickly became evident that the taste wasn't the problem at all. Even if new Coke tasted better in blind taste tests, Coca-Cola's success had never relied on taste alone. Its incredible marketing had transformed Coca-Cola into an icon that people viewed as an old friend, a constant presence in their everyday lives for over a century. Coca-Cola had never changed, no matter what was happening in the world, and changing something that meant so much to people was seen as a betrayal. One furious letter likened changing Coca-Cola to making the grass purple, while another complained that the company had taken away their childhood. Even months later, the protests continued unabated, and it soon became evident that the company had no choice but to return to the old formula. People were outraged that the original formula was being replaced, and Coca-Cola received thousands of letters and phone calls from angry customers. Despite the strong backlash, Coca-Cola decided to move forward with new Coke. They thought people would prefer the new formula, and they were wrong. Sales of new Coke never improved, and eventually, it was removed from circulation completely. However, despite being so completely wrong, the end result was that new Coke had unintentionally made people realize how much they loved original Coke. When Coca-Cola reintroduced the original formula under the name Classic Coke, suddenly all of the anger turned to euphoria and praise. All the letters and phone calls arriving at the company were filled with adoring fans thanking the company and commenting on how much it meant to them. One Coca-Cola marketer said, you would have thought we'd invented a cure for cancer. Immediately after reintroducing the old flavor, Coca-Cola sales dramatically increased. Business Week named the whole thing the marketing blunder of the decade, but some skeptical analysts felt the company had staged the entire thing for publicity and to remind customers how much Coke means to them. If the whole stunt really was planned, it would be one of the greatest marketing strategies imaginable, but that was not the case at all. New Coke was a catastrophic misjudgment by Coke. The whole thing helped people feel more attached and loyal to Coke than ever before, which is why New Coke was one of the most successful mistakes ever. Here's the craziest part of all this. It was proven time and time again that in a blind taste test where people didn't know which drink was which, people chose New Coke as the best, Pepsi as second, and Original Coke as third. And yet, customers had overwhelmingly decided they wanted Original Coke. They wanted the drink they liked the taste of the least, and that is the biggest compliment Coca-Cola's marketing could ever hope to get. The image of Coca-Cola created in people's minds is so powerful that it overrides taste, logic, or data. In many ways, Coke was still operating off the same principle that the patent medicine industry had used all those years ago. It's not about what your product really is, it's about what your customer thinks your product is. It's about what it represents. That's the reason Coke continued to spend billions and billions on advertising every year, even though around 94% of the world's entire population recognize the Coke logo already, and over 2 billion servings of Coca-Cola are drunk every day. Coke is built on an image that needs to be constantly reinforced. They don't sell you on their sugar water, they sell you on the good times, friends, family, and happy memories. Coke positions itself as an old friend, and hey, what's a little controversy between friends? So, there you have it. The story of the new Coke disaster and how it became one of Coca-Cola's greatest marketing triumphs. It just goes to show you that sometimes even the biggest mistakes can lead to the biggest successes. Thank you for watching, leave a like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.